Hello, and welcome to the Kirov International Music Festival podcast series. Our guest is a renowned pianist and teacher, Professor John Perry. Mr. Perry, winner of Bozzoni, Piotti, and Marguerite Long International Piano Competitions, has had a dual career as both a major performing artist and a teacher and mentor for numerous winners of Naumburg, Cleveland, Chopin International in Warsaw, Ben Clyburn, Queen Elizabeth, Leeds, Dublin, Bozzoni, Piotti, and other major competitions. Mr. Perry serves as professor of the Glenn Gould School of the Royal Conservatory of Music in Toronto, professor of the State University Northridge in Los Angeles, as visiting artist faculty at Boston University, and as professor emeritus of the University of Southern California Thornton School of Music. Mr. Perry has recently founded a music school, John Perry Academy of Music in Los Angeles, of which he serves as an artistic director. During the summer, Mr. Perry teaches at the Lake Como International Piano Academy, Banff Center in Alberta, Canada, Sarasota Music Festival in Florida, Orford Music Festival in Quebec, Morningside Music Bridge Program in Calgary, International Klaviersommer Kochen in Germany, and many, many other festivals. Mr. Perry, it's just impossible to adequately introduce you, but it is clear that you're a man of boundless energy and passion for music. My first question, how do you manage teaching and performing of such intense schedule all year it's, round? It's like uh, like you have t two lights in, the, in your house and you turn on one or the other. It's very hard to do the same in the same half a day, you know. Usually if I have important engagements, I will cut the teaching out for a while and then I will come back and not doing any practice. So it's good. To, but I, I need to add that uh, the uh, my main position now, be there, there are two. You mentioned one, but the other one is professor of piano at Rutgers University in New Brunswick. That's That's Thank where I am most of the time now. Thank you so, so much for correcting me. Well, I, I, probably you had a, a, a dated uh, biography, and maybe I should have uh, updated it at some time. Maybe I was asked, but I don't think so. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much for, for adding, you know, just one more position, one more accomplishment. And, you know, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, please tell us more about the Academy, your Academy in Los Angeles, how that came about. Well, we decided we should do our own summer festival. Uh, we toyed with the idea of making it uh, year-round, but then all the problems of certification and, and uh, what the state would demand uh, made us just decide to do it in the, in the summer. Now, I must say that it's been going for 10 years, but this year it's going to be very, very limited in scope. And last year it was canceled because of COVID. So we hope that we get back into full swing right. 2022. Like Absolutely. everybody else hopes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. The, this pandemic has been horrible for the music and arts. Yeah, yeah. All Just all horrible. Uh, a lot of people have been very uh, successful in presenting themselves on, on, on the internet. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it will never substitute for live music. And because no recorded music is adequate. You think you're Absolutely. hearing you think you're hearing the performance, but you're not. You're you're Absolutely. hearing a, a diluted uh and that is with a T and with a D, a diluted <laughs> performance as well. So we can hardly Absolutely. wait to I just started teaching one-on-one -on -one last week, and it was like coming out of a, it was like being released from prison, actually. <laughs> Although I haven't had that experience yet. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I wanted to ask you, you know, you have so many students, you taught countless uh, amazing young people all over the world. Have you ever had an impossible student? Oh, of course. Of course, uh, they don't happen as often as you might think, but every once in a while, yes, of course. And 
Yeah. Uh, you know, I tell you, there's a, when I first started teaching, I judged only by talent. But then I realized talent wasn't enough. It has to be a, a work, a, a sense of wanting to work and improve. There has to be a sense of being a good person because some very talented schmuck is not going to make it. Because you have to deal with people, whatever you do in this world. And so I, I started... I started looking more holistically at a, at what a person had in in their soul and in their mind, in their spirit. But I I feel that uh, being a successful teacher is largely dependent upon the people you choose to be students. You know, mm. it's just like coaches of of uh, athletic teams. The ones that are successful are the ones that know the people to pick on their teams. And I hmm. always, I look not for the finished performance or the, the adequacy of the performance. I look for the talent behind the performance. What can this person possibly become? And some people are better than that than others, and I'm very good at it. Because mm. there's certain things you can teach, and there's certain things you can't teach. Absolutely. One sense of wonderment and playing of music. Somebody has not quite a adequate technique yet, but they play a Mozart sonata, and they turn a phrase that make, makes your hair stand on it. And that's the person you want. This, that is what you cannot do as a teacher. You can't, you can't change the spirit. You can't change the... That's right. The gestalt. That's right. As, as, that's right. Yeah, the spark. The spark has to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you can't do <laughs> as or a you teacher. Could say lo or you could say love, probably. Love. Love Just will cover it, yes. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, then, then you are a performer of enormous caliber and you've played all over the world. Share with us some of your stories, some of your performance stories, not playing with other musicians or by yourself, funny stories or, you know, just impactful or something well, that just... You know, when you, when you play with other people, sometimes it's an incredible pleasure and sometimes it's an awful experience, depending on the, 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 you don't have to think the same way, but you have to be somehow on the same page to make it good, worthwhile. You play with somebody, you take a little time in a phrase and they're with you and they do something wonderful. You play with somebody else and you take a little time and they say you're out of rhythm. You know, so it's all, the, especially, I hate to say, but it, it's very difficult if you play with somebody that is 99% of the time playing in an orchestra because they get very, very, very oriented towards the beat and towards the conductor, and they have to. That's what they're hired to do. But uh, yeah. it, it can be it's the most rewarding experience in one's musical life, or as I said, it can be just disastrous. Absolutely. <laughs> but you, you, you always make do somehow. You know, nobody else knows that. Listening, because you make allowances and you give up your beliefs to make compromises, just like mm -hmm. Congress. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, <laughs> We better not go there. No, yeah, not we better not go there. <laughs> but, um, okay, so let me ask you this. You constantly see hopeful, ambitious young people, and some are very, very talented. Maybe some are less talented, uh, but they try to co compensate with their hard work. What is your advice for young musicians, for young aspiring musicians? What's the most important in your mind? 
Well, the, mo then we come back to what you said, the word love. If you love it so much, that's what you have to do. That, that's what you should do. If you don't love it that much that you can give it up, then you should give it up. It's very simple. And uh, I must say, 90% of all the people that I have graduated over the many years I've taught are in music. That's only about 10%. It's, it has nothing to do with talent. It has something to do with if they're interested maybe more in something else. Mm -hmm. Usually it is medicine, interestingly. Most mm -hmm. of the people that are, they, they, they say that there is a certain symbiotic connection between math and music and medicine and music. I've heard that said before. I don't quite understand it, but I, I can I can sort of understand it. It's, it's they're both very logical, and they're both uh, to be a good doctor. You have to be a very good. You, know, you have to have a sense of what the problem is. Mm -hmm. and so it's a lot. It's not just knowledge. It's it's also quite a bit of instinct that goes into being a good doctor. So, uh, but it's interesting that that's where most of them have gone that have been capable of a career that uh, have not gone into music as a career. But mm -hmm. to me, uh, um, I regret very much that because of the way our institutions are, are made up, if a person changes major, they can't study with me anymore. But sometimes, sometimes they're more talented than than the rest of them that are still staying with me. You know, it can happen. It can easily happen. So they, right. I think we'd be better off if there was more, uh, shall we say, flexibility in college degree programs. Mm -hmm. Here you have. You have a major university with, you know, thousands of students, thousands of professors, and each one that has a certain major has to take all the same things. It doesn't make sense. But anyhow, you know, in my, have, in my in my conversations well, with other with other faculty and also my own reflections, this topic of music being present as in someone's life since earliest childhood always comes up. How important do you think it is for a child to be exposed to music from the earliest days? I really wish I knew, but most most of the people that end up being very, very good started very, very early, but there are still exceptions. I've had people that didn't start until they were 10 years old reach wow. incredible heights. Wow. I had a hmm. girl from... from from Germany it, it, I accepted in my class at USC when I taught there and I thought well there's something there I'm gonna see and, and now she's got one of the best careers of any of my former students so you, the, no, nothing is for sure and and uh, it's in, in this conversation about when to start and when people can be pushed so hard in the beginning that they rebel. They go walk away. I don't want to do this anymore. Especially if if they're kind of pushed and pushed and pushed by parents. Hmm. And, so there is like an opposite reaction. They yeah, are pushed yeah. and they rebel. Yeah, yeah. I was lucky. I had parents that didn't know anything about music, and I started playing the piano in my grandmother's house, and they were floored. They couldn't. It happened at Christmas. I, I just figured out the pitches and the harmonies, and I started playing Christmas carols because they were on the radio all the time. And everybody in the family was just, what's this? Well, how did he learn to do that? So I started. They, they were intelligent enough to uh Send me to piano teachers, but I didn't have a good one until I was in seventh grade. That's when I really had started having good teachers. 
because they didn't know, you know. <laughs> but they never had to force me, and they were just. But it never stopped you. You were resourceful. You figured out many things on your own. Oh, yeah. Well, but I did have really good teachers from seventh grade on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really good. What, what is a good teacher in your mind? Like, we First say of good all, teacher, bad teacher. okay. First of all, what a good teacher isn't is somebody that hardly can hear if you're playing correctly or not. That is, and that happens more than you would like to believe. So the first six teachers I had, one after another for six years, were bad musicians. I knew that when I was six years old. But I was a little bit mean. But I had to find out. I'd come home and I'd say, I can't study with this person anymore. And my dad would say, why not? I said, they can't hear. Oh, what do you mean? I said, I play wrong notes on purpose and they don't hear them. That was my way of dealing with whether they could hear or not. <laughs> so you were an impossible student in a good in a good way. Well, I mean, I didn't I didn't fight with the teachers. I just mm. set them up for a fall. That's all. <laughs> I mean, that's a uh, how else could I could I know for sure? Right. No. Right. No, I only accuse them at home over the dinner table, not anyplace else. <laughs> you know, so many people say classical music, you know, and it's only what two percent of the market today. You know, what's the future of classical music? But then we have also internet. We see a lot of people, you know, finding their audiences and people that were not exposed to classical music before coming in contact with it through different media, films, uh -huh. video games, learning about the music, discovering and to their surprise falling in love with this complex and beautiful and elusive form of art. What do you think is the future for classical music? Oh, I wish I knew that, but I tell you, there's, there continues to be people that can't be away from it. And one of the things we have that's going against us now is that there's not nearly as much good music in the school systems as there was. My God, I grew up in northern Minnesota. We had a choir that sang Bach in our high school. We had a town of 12,000 people with a symphony orchestra of about 85 people. And many of those in that symphony orchestra became first chair in places like the Boston Symphony, the, the Minnesota Orchestra, and, and Chicago Orchestra. I mean, it, it's, it, it was a rich setting. Uh, I wanted to desperately play in that orchestra. I learned the oboe. But by the time I got to high school, they were no longer playing Brahms symphonies and Frog symphony. And Mozart symphonies, they were playing Leroy Anderson's The Clock. And so I lost interest in playing in the orchestra. That's, 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 things, it shows you how quickly things can deteriorate if there's not support at the educational level. And mm -hmm. this is, this is it, it could change very easily if there were programs like that again. And they were very, all over the country, there were very good programs in classical music. But the uh, school boards and all their intelligence started dropping them for, to save money and uh, put it into athletics and put it into science. And that backfired, actually, because the people that were interested in music turned out to be the ones that were very good at science. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as they say, uh, you, you can't have you can't have people without knowledge making decisions about some things that are that important. But it happens all the time. Completely agree with you. Um, and yet, concerts 
live performances, festivals, they're very important. Um, I believe so. Uh, what's your opinion? Um, is it important to have festivals like the Kirov International Music Festival? Why Absolutely. Is it well, I think that uh, all festivals of a certain quality make validate people's interest in their in their music. Mm -hmm. You go, you you meet with a bunch of other musicians, and it stimulates you. I remember when you know when I was growing up in a small town, I, I, everybody thought I was really incredible at pianist. But when I went to Eastman, I wrote my father, and I said, you know, everybody here is talented. I said, if I'm going to excel, I'm going to have to work my ass off. <laughs> you know, that's exactly, and that's true. That's true. Talent is cheap. But uh, those other qualities that we mentioned earlier are what make yeah. the difference. And the talent is absolutely necessary. Don't think I'm saying anything different. But mm -hmm. uh, there are other aspects that are right. important too. I agree. And, uh, but I, agree. Uh, I think it will survive because not everybody is reading. Uh, Emmanuel Kant either, but it survives, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, again, I believe that, that the music we love and we play and we study and we teach is so rich, it's so profound, it's so beautiful, it's so amazing that people will always discover, people will always discover it. Who was a German philosopher about a hundred years ago that said, music is proof that there is a God. Was it Schopenhauer or Nietzsche? Could, could have been, I can't remember, I can't remember, but it's a great, mm -hmm. it is a great quote because uh, everybody, if they are exposed to it, will be moved by it. And we know that music, the sound, exists in the universe outside Earth. Yeah, exists in yeah. The universe. Absolutely. And it is a language you do not need to study the meaning of to be moved by it. True. That is and true. That's, that's one of the things that's so difficult. When you have a comp competition and somebody asks you afterwards why you chose that person, uh, it's, you, it's, it, it's a different language. Words can only peripherally skirt around the actual issue, but you can't explain it in in terminology. It's it's, it's part of it. That's is, true. That's true. You know, you can. There's do so many it. so you many situations talk. when words are powerless, but music yeah. captures the essence of of the exactly like. exactly. I believe it was Beethoven who said that music is more profound than any philosophy. That music. I believe that. that. I believe that. I love what Mahler said. If I could explain why, I, how, and why I wrote my music, I wouldn't have had to write the music. That's true. Isn't that wonderful? It is. It is. Well, sir, we're so honored to have you uh, teach at the festival, to be with us. And um, I hope we'll meet in person. I hope we'll get to talk more. And um, we certainly look forward to your teaching at the well, Kirk International I, Music Festival. I think, I think that uh, it looks like we're on the way to doing that, I hope. I hope so. I hope so. We will try. We'll do our best. Thank, Thank you. you so, so much. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. It's a great pleasure. Thank you.